G'day ladies and gentlemen, my name's Isaac Butterfield and I rarely do this, but here is a warning about this video. Do not watch it. Don't do it, alright? This is not for the faint of heart. If you have a lactose intolerance, this is not for you. Turn it off now. If you have a weak constitution, motherfucker, let me tell you this. This will ruin your life. This is the hardest video I've ever had to make. This is about the most painful TikToker of all time. The queen of the feminists. She eats misogynists for breakfast. Ladies and gentlemen, watching her content nearly made me walk out into the highway and throw myself in front of a fucking truck. Ladies and gentlemen, please let me introduce you to uh, Drew a flu. <laughs> That laugh, it sounds like a combination of the clown from It and some fucking evil queen that's definitely on the spectrum. So, who the fuck is Drew of Flu? Well, according to Business Insider, because they did an article on it for some fucking weird reason, Drew of Flu, TikTok's crusader of women, says she's constantly shoveling out misogyny from the app with her viral Take down videos. Ooh. A flu who has built up 2.6 million, well, it's now 3 million, on TikTok by critiquing sexist content on the app began her TikTok journey by telling stories of her own negative experiences with, with men. Now, the sexist content that they're talking about is oftentimes men making fun of women, and Drew makes fun of men in her videos. So it's okay according to Business Insider, to make fun of men, but not okay to make fun of women. Business Insider, are you saying that women are so weak that they can't be made fun of? That sounds very, very demeaning and rude, you fucking pigs. It snowballed into her becoming the app's unofficial misogyny and sexism watchdog. Combining men's sexist comments with jokes about their hairlines and height. Uh-oh. She told Insider, now these videos regularly rack up millions of views. Now remember on TikTok, it's all about virality. TikTok's whole game is to keep people interested. So they'll show you as many videos as fucking possible. So if you see someone go viral on TikTok, it means nothing. Go and check out their other profiles on Instagram or YouTube. See if people really give a shit about them. Now, I am going to review some of Drew Aflu's content, uh, some of her videos. But first, some housekeeping. Drew does encounter some sexism on the app. Some people are very rude to her and racist as well. Okay, and that's not on. And the death threats she gets. Listen, if you're watching this video, think, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do Batman Solid and send her a death threat. Don't be a fucking dumb fuck, all right? Don't do that. That's stupid. As for the genuine sexist and racist or whatever, like that's like, good on her. You should be able to attack those people. But she attacks a lot of other people that just are having a, having a laugh, and that's fine too. You can do that, but. Apparently she's docked some people and even helped people lose their jobs. And by that I mean her followers have gone in and demanded that people lose their jobs. Or at least they've been fearful of it. That's not how we do things on the internet. Just leave people alone. If you want to make a video about someone, do it. But don't try and ruin their fucking lives because they made a joke. When I was watching Drew's content, and it was tough, I found out that she was a one-trick pony, okay? What she does in her videos is she watches it, she does her evil, maniacal, it clown, autism laugh, and then she makes jokes about a dude's height. That's number one, okay? Dude's height. His hairline, either bald or balding. Whether or not he has a six-pack, and basically to say, oh, you're not funny, okay. So let's just go through and do Drew's work for her. Let's have a look at those four things and work out whether or not I pertain to any of them. <clears throat> Height, I'm six foot eight, I win. Let's go to funny, I'm a comedian, I win. Six pack, okay, I've got a fucking, I've got a one pack, I've got a six pack under a bag of ice. I'm working on it, I'm getting there. And as far as the hairline, suck my balls, Drew. <laughs> I've had words to my hairline. I'm very cognizant of the fact that it is very much stuck in reverse. <laughs> I said, if you go back one more fucking centimetre, mate, I'm getting the clippers out and you're gone. I'm going full chrome dome mode. I'm ready for that. I've even got a tour name ready for that year that I go bald. I'm going to call it the bald, the beard, the butterfield. It'll sell out, for sure. I'm on tour now, by the way. Come and see me live. It's a great time. Tickets are below. Anyway, let's get to know Drew of Lou. I feel empowered, and especially women who are thick. I'm sorry, but there's a big difference between being thick and being obese. Okay, so far in this video, this dude is critiquing the fact, and it's a very well-known fact, that fat, obese models... I'm not talking about size 16. I'm talking about 
fat, giant, obese models are not a good thing for when it comes to ideas or ideals around body positivity. Why? Because it gives people the excuse to blow out and not give a fuck about what they're putting in their body and what type of exercise output they have in their lives. Now this is a very woke sort of ideology, the body positivity, all that shit. But you know what else is a woke ideology? That we must be terrified of a particular disease that's floating around at the moment. But how about this? Obesity and the increased risk of COVID-19. People with obesity are 46 percent more at risk of getting COVID-19 according to a study from August. It found that they are also more at risk of getting really sick, facing a 113 percent higher chance of being hospitalized, a 74 percent higher risk of needing to be treated in the ICU, and perhaps most troublingly of all, a 48%, nearly 50% increase in the risk of death. So yes, it's nice to have Tess Holiday running around with a big fat folds flipping and flopping everywhere, but you are 50% more likely to die if you get the Rona. And guess what? The Rona's everywhere. So Drew, pick a side. Which is healthier? Do whatever the f*** you want to do with your body. Nobody's stopping. Ah, that's where that should have stopped. That's where this garbage video should have ended. Unfortunately for all of us, it did not. But that's okay, because the universe brought you to me. <laughs> oh my god, that fucking laugh. When did you start doing that? Your 11 year old audience just was like, oh my god, have you heard? Oh, she's so funny, the way that she laughs. It's so great the way that she laughs. Now, I don't know for sure if all of her audience is female. Let's, let's have a look. Holy fucking shit, 95%. I hate to say it, ladies, but you are easily entertained. Now, I know I said before that most of the females who follow her are probably 11 years old. That's probably not right. I think you have to be 12 to join the app, so they're 12 years old. I cleared a spot for you, brother. I cleared my sketch. Because you came from my fucking girl, Tess. Not on my watch. <laughs> First of all, let's get this out of the way. Tess Holiday is one of the most famous models in the world. Did you hear what I said? In the world, bitch. Yes, she's famous for being a giant fat fuck. Go on. I peeped the Instagram and all your <clears throat> garbage content, and I can tell from your pictures that you're strong 5'5", five five, like on a good day. And I'm guessing from those feet that your shoe size is probably what, like an eight, eight and a half? Yeah. <laughs> So she's attacking a dude for body shaming somebody else and she's doing that by body shaming someone. Listen, I don't care. Body shame away. But if you're gonna, you know, do a big song and dance about how great you are because body shaming is bad and then go and do it, you're a big fucking hypocrite, Drew. If it can't make it past the cheeks, you could just say that, bro. Well, unless you have a micro penis, probably the reason you can't make it past the cheeks is because old love has had too much cheesecake. You also said that you think it's selfish of her to look like that because you don't want your future kids to grow up in a world that idolizes people like her. <laughs> you know what's actually selfish? Looking like Bob the Tomato from Veggie Tales and thinking that you're at the top of the list when it comes to picking partners to procreate with, bitch. I don't know who Bob the Tomato is, but what does the way that someone else look like have to do with the fact that he is being 100% factual with what he's saying. Being obese will eventually kill you and therefore promoting it to a young audience like yours is terrible. So fuck you to the moon, Drew. All right, let's go back and have a look what this dickhead who took his shirt off for no reason said in his uh, in his video. <clears throat> Obesity is tolerated. I'd go further to say it's actually championed. Uh, depression is glorified. Well, maybe in some circumstances. I know people hear a lot of people going, oh, I'm depressed, I'm depressed, I'm depressed. They do it with, oh, I'm anxious, I'm anxious. Oh, I've got ADHD. You know the people who don't whinge a bitch about being depressed and anxious and having ADHD. People who actually have depression, anxiety and ADHD. Those people are living tough lives and all the power to your brothers and sisters out there. Keep fucking striving forward, it'll get better. Drug addiction, trendy, maybe. When I was younger, I went out with my mates, all of them couldn't go to nightclubs without a handful of pills, so maybe it is. And being alpha is shamed. Okay, being alpha should be shamed. And I'll tell you why. If you think you're an alpha, 
you're not. Actual alphas, leaders of the pack, are ones that go about their business daily by helping other people and making them better versions of themselves. That's an alpha. That means your dad can be an alpha, or your mum can be an alpha, your sister, your wife, it doesn't fucking matter. Being someone who leads from the front, that is an alpha. First off, obesity is tolerated. Is it? Is it? Are you asking me? Yes. Yes, it is. And do you notice how her reaction to that, rather than talking about it and explaining it or even arguing the point, her reaction is to get blah, 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 blah. What exactly is your definition of tolerance? Making your entire personality about drinking pre-workout and hating fat people for existing? You know, people have said this about me, that I hate fat people, and it couldn't be further from the truth. I dedicate some videos to actually helping people to lose weight because it'll allow them to live a longer life because I don't want you dying in your 40s from heart disease. Okay? I understand why Drew's mad at this. Because she's a beer girl herself, right? She's probably struggled with her weight her whole life. But take sex out of it. Male or female, you cannot live a healthy life as an obese person. And of course, the fucking alphas shamed. Here's a fun fact. Alphas don't exist. <laughs> Not even in the wild, bitch. What? Wolves, lions, fucking sea lions, galahs, they all have a leader, that's the alpha. It doesn't mean anything about being male, all right? You can say alpha male, you can say alpha female, you can say alpha or male, I don't give a fuck. But it is a fucking thing, so shut up. A key that opens many locks is a master key. A lock that opens to any key is a shitty lock. Okay, so old mate's basically saying for a dude to have his dick go into a lot of people, <laughs> He has to be very charming and charismatic and special, right? And that's a fair point. And for a lady to have their lock or, or vag intercepted by a lot of people, they don't really have to do much and that might be a bit of a turn off for some people. Now that is a matter for each person, like I don't, whatever. If you want to cop heaps of dicks, all the power to your sister, brother or whatever. But here's the thing, for a man to go to a nightclub and pick up a lady, he has to be charming, he has to be funny, he has to be good looking, he's got to be fit, he's got to be dressed nice, smell nice, he's got to buy a drink, he's got to have money in his account, all that type of shit. And maybe he'll get a route after the third date after he's paid some money in the form of dinner. For a lady, all you have to do, right? Ladies, you ready for this? All you have to do is be above a four and walk in and say, who wants to fuck me? You will be inundated with dick. Us men are charitable people. Any hole's a goal. That's a male phrase. Have you ever heard that before? Any hole's a goal? That's a male thing to say. No ladies running around going, oh, any dick will do the trick. No way, just men. We are charitable, nice people. This dude is easily the most insufferable dude I've ever seen on any form of media. <laughs> Worse than Joe Rogan. Because on top of the fact that he is painfully fucking sick, this man hasn't seen or touched women in I don't know how fucking long. It's so evident. That's homophobic, Drew. He is also balding. Like... <laughs> Drewy, 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 can I call you Drewy, babe? Again with the men with the receding hairlines. You're talking about something that men cannot control. It's in their DNA, love. For someone who promotes body positivity all the time, the fact that you're body shaming men it's a real shame. But yeah, I don't really give a fuck, but the fact that you're running around like some boss bitch warrior, that you're some mad dog, thinking you're real cool because you're saving the world and protecting people. No, you're just a mean fuck who's doing the exact same thing to other people. Hey! So I want to talk to y'all about something that's like funny, but also, eh, not. <laughs> oh, for fuck me dead, I cannot watch this shit much longer. Honestly, it's doing my fucking head in. Women, children, and dogs are loved unconditionally. A man is only loved under the condition that he provides something. Do y'all hear that? It's the world's tiniest violin. <laughs> God, bro, men are... <laughs> See, I disagree with you, big bad Drew. Men go through issues. And what old mate was saying in that video is that Everyone else in the world, the females, the children, get loved unconditionally, and yet men don't, unless they add value. Maybe that's one of the reasons that men kill themselves disproportionately to women. So yeah, sometimes it needs to be about 
blokes as well. Now it's not just TikTok where Drew carries on like the worst human alive, it's also her amazing podcast. Now I forgot what the name of it was, but I'm sure it's very memorable. Two Idiot Girls. Wow. May I recommend episode two, it's a real laugh, breaking the chokehold of internal misogyny. Or my favourite whinging episode, number three, women aren't allowed to literally like anything. Drew, you are by far the most painful human being and worst feminist that I've seen in a long time. You have amassed a giant audience on TikTok by not making any jokes, not by p making any points, just by being there and slightly complaining. People sit back at their home as they scroll through TikTok, not even really giving a shit about what you say. They just hear your stupid fucking laugh and go, yes, yes queen, she nailed it. In closing, fuck you to the moon, Drew. I hope you have a lovely day though. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, come and see me live. I'm all over the country. Australia and New Zealand 2022, baby. The link is down below. Be Motherfucker, peace in the Middle East, me dick stinks. And you want to cover up that bald spot? Get this new hat, it's out now.